everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to Kit Crunch Time. And today is the day we get together with Nicole, Grace, and the rest of the gals in the monthly celebrations YouTube hop. And we see what we're going to celebrate for the month of September. And I'm anxious to see how many of us do school because a lot of us uh, school would be something that's the focus in September. So that would be interesting to see. And of course, that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to record the story about something as a homeschooler, we got asked for 14 years in a row. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited to do this page. And of course, uh, as I showed in last week's video with my kit crunch, I started with the inspiration of this six by six paper pad by my mind's eye called blast off. And I'll have the video listed below. So of course I'm going to use that as an inspiration and then also to my kit. And I want to show you where my inspiration is coming from this week. And before I get into that, I want to show you a quick and very, very affordable way to organize a kit if you are playing with it uh, sooner rather than later. This would not be really storage. This would be a way to organize it as you're playing with it. And it is a product from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if it's a, st a sticker if it's a Hobby Lobby brand. I think it's by Storage Sol Solutions, and it's called a Sticker Stadium. I've had a couple of these in my life. And so it's just an accordion folder. And let me move this for a minute. <clears throat> so you can see it's flat. I have a lot of flat items in there, but it stands up on its own and it also expands. Expand, 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 expand. So I have all of my kit in there from last week other than my lump and bump. And you see it's, you know, it's pretty flat. And so what I did was I started with my paper and I went according to size and went smaller as I uh, put my items in my pocket. But it's very affordable. And I think it's around 14 or $15. But of course you wait till it's half off. Very affordable way to organize a kit. And then... I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider this long-term storage unless it would be in a closet or something that wouldn't get dust uh, because everything would be right there. It sits on its own. It's very nice. And so with my Kit Crunch kits, I don't really store them because I'm playing with them. And so I just wanted to show that as another option. I have used pizza boxes. I've used iris bins. I have used cafeteria trays. And so that was just something else I am using this month. So, you know, I use a little bit of everything. I wanted to show that option. It's always something fun. It sits really nice on your desk. And so what I'm going to do is, oh, yes. And so you see I don't have my lump and bump in there. Okay, because it would get lost. You can't do small items unless you was to use something like one of these uh, four by six or a five by seven photo case. You could put your small items in this and then put it in that sticker stadium. That would be a good option. So again, it's just another option, you know, as crafters and scrapbookers, we like to share. And then of course I'm playing with my tags. I know I'm going to be getting this on this layout today because I have an inspiration piece that came from close to my heart. Now, this is from this catalog idea. I love these idea books by Stampin' Up! and Close to My Heart. And so this one was from my friend Kim Ferguson. I will have her information listed below. She's part of the RTS family if you want a Close to My Heart gal. And she has a YouTube channel which you must check out because she is so talented. Very talented. And so my inspiration is coming from page 61 and it is this right here. And it is simply just a band of paper so quick, but then it also has a grid of six circles. And so of course, you know, there's the Epcot ball. We have a circle right off the bat. And then I want to play with uh, something I also put in my kit, which is this creative memories cutting tool system, the ovals and also the circles. This was from my friend Pat. And so I'm going to be playing with this tool. How fun is that? And so what I'm going to do is pick out the papers because this is my inspiration for the six by six paper pad. And then I will come back and show a middle process of how I was using this creative memories cutting tool and um, how the middle process is working because it's very simple layout. It is just a big band of paper with six circles, but I'm going to play around with my creative memory cutter there and do some, I'll just give you a quick little peek because I was doing a test run. So I'm going to be playing and making some circles such as this. That's my plan, okay? And oh yes, before I forget, when I showed my Kit Crunch kit video last week, there was a hidden Mickey 
and some people spied it and some people didn't and a lot of people wanted to know where it was it is in the third photo and it is three paper clips in the shape of a circle in the shape of a hidden mickey so see if you can find that it's uh, i spy yes a hidden mickey it was very fun so uh, of course i've been playing around with this because this is a new tool to me i have never owned this this is an older product and I will tell you, it works like a gem. It's so nice. So I'm going to be playing with these rings, okay? And so that's the plan, okay? So I was just playing, getting some ideas. So I'm going to probably get, you see how they had stitched, oh no, that was a stamp. It was a stamp. How fun is that? That's easy. <laughs> yeah, staples. Uh, that was easy. Yes, using a stamp. But I'm going to use these circles as my rings as they showed on the layout. And of course, they have three photos. I'm going to be using one 4 by 6 photo because as I'm telling this story, I only need one photo. And let's talk about that for a minute because some people have asked me, how do you get out of that habit of scrapbooking every photo you take? And when you change your mindset that you're just recording the story, you're not recording the photos, that changes almost automatically or gradually. It's however you, however you take it. For me, uh, years ago, I ran into the, uh, I ran into the stumbling block that I was, I'm going to say this lightly. I was tired of events scrapbooking. It was the same holiday, same event, same trip, same place, same people, yada, yada, yada. So then I started to get into more story base and that's where lay out a day through the Scrap Happy membership. I'll have that information linked below because there's one coming up in October if you're a Scrap Happy member. That's when those lay out a day, that story based scrapbooking started to um, really appeal to me. And so then that transcended over into my regular scrapbooking that when I do events, and trips. If I have three pictures of my daughter in front of the Epcot ball, I don't need all three photos, but that doesn't mean I can't use all three in some different type of stories. I don't have to put them all on the same page. So in this case, I only need one photo because I'm going to tell the story and only one photo is needed. And so if you have a layout and you see like a lot of, if you see that a lot of your photos are the same thing, maybe your kids are just positioned in a different way, perhaps take some of those photos off and give your layout more room to breathe. You don't need eight photos of the eight of the same eight things to tell the story. I just want to say that. And it does something that happens automatically or you have to gradually do that. But then there's also people, and my sister is one of them, when she went to Paris, she took, I forget how many photos, and she wants to scrapbook every single photo. And I say, that's exactly what you should do. If you have a trip of a lifetime or if you have a very special event and you want to scrapbook every single photo, that's exactly what you should do. There is no rules here. You can do what you like. But if you want to get out of having to print so many photos and use so many photos, look at the photos that tell the story. You don't have to have every expression and every um, motion on the photos to give that representation of what your story is about. I hope that made sense. Okay, so let's, uh, with this layout in mind up here, let's pick out some papers. And so there's uh, rings on every one of those this really is a grid. These six circles make a grid. And so I'm just simply going to pick, I think, six pieces of paper. Why not? <laughs> yeah, just rip them out now and be done with it. And this paper pad, they have a cut mark, but then it says a perforated. Is it perforated? I think so. Or maybe it'd be easy just to rip it this way. Well, that's what we're going to do. It says it's perforated. Oh, no, I don't think that perforated edge really went through. No, you have to actually cut that. No perforated. Hm, interesting. It's funny how different companies do things differently. Okay, and so I'm going to pick out, well, you see what I'm doing? I'm just picking, <laughs> I'm going to pick out six pieces of paper. So what I'm going to do is, I've already looked at this pad several times. I'm going to pick out a variety. So I have two that's in a navy background. So I want to find one that has a white background. Of course, that, oh, that's silver. Why not? <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, yes, I'll put that peek through. I'm going to play with that a little bit. Because we had to get some silver rings on her because of the Epcot ball. And so I need another white background. Okay, so how many did, was that? Oh, I cannot stand these branding strips. 
I really can't. They interfere with what I want to see. So a lot of times I will put the branding strips down at the bottom so I can see what I have. So I have two navy uh, papers. I have a silver and two white. So let's see if we can find something else that looks fun. Uh, that's star paper, but I have star paper. I have holographic paper. And I might just use those and see what we come up with. Oh, this multi-stripe, why not? Let's go with that. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So there are six papers, and then what I'm gonna do with these six papers is I'm simply going to be playing with this Creative Memories cutting tool, and I will be picking out a background piece. Now, since my rings are going to be busy, this white piece of paper here is gonna be uh, my band, and then I'm gonna do a background. So what I will do is I will pull out my stack of papers that are in my sticker stadium here. And then what I will do is I will find something that will not compete with these patterns here of this My Mind's Eye Blast Off. And of course, I'm going to need two because I'm going to need a background piece. And I can already tell you they have some washi strips. There's my washi. How quick was that? <laughs> yes. And then I'm going to use these sequins around the circles. This is coming together quite well. And then, of course, they have empty space up here. So what my plan is, is I'm gonna use some tags. So instead of putting that whole thing in my space, no, on my desk, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do what I always do, and that is a representation. Let me find one, if I can pull it out of here one-handed. Let me find one, and I'm gonna put one here. Not saying that's the one I'm gonna use, but this will give me the representation. I'm gonna run some tags up there at the top. It looks a little plain there. And uh, you'll come back and you'll see what my title is going to be because it's kind of interesting. Like I said, it's a question we got asked all 14 years that we were homeschoolers. Okay, so hold on and I will show some more of my middle process. Okay, I am back for a little bit of the middle process of cutting all of the 6x6 papers into these lovely little rings using this Creative Memories tool, which is just awesome. I can't thank you enough, Pat. I really can't. And so, of course, this is the template that comes with it. And so you get three different circles. And then, of course, it tells you on here which of these little apparatuses you need to cut the circles you want. So basically, I'm cutting three inches, a three and a half, and a uh, three and a fourth inch circle. And so, of course, it's color coded. So it tells you which blade to use. And so this is basically the only second or third time I've ever played with this. So this is truly how simple it is if someone like me can get it on the second or third try. And so I did show, or what I want to do is show how I did this because someone had asked me when I showed the kit if I could absolutely show how to use this. Now, like I said, this is an older Creative Memories product, but you can find it on Etsy, uh, Etsy and eBay and, yes, Amazon. You can find it. It is. It was something that was in abundance, and a lot of people do not keep this, so it's in a lot of d -stashes. A lot of people are uh, getting rid of it, but you can still buy the blades, too. And so I think there was a, maybe another one that came out, um, maybe different versions. I think there's still some on the Creative Memories website. And so I'm going to show, now, when I did this, of course, the first one I used was a holographic paper, so I don't know if it shifted on me, but I will tell you, if you're using any type of, any type of cutting system, whether it's this one or not, you need to put some type of adhesive on the back because it does shift, and who wants that? So I first tried this removable adhesive, and it worked okay, but this is expensive, and I don't have a lot of this, and so when I need it, I want it. And I have a lot more of the ATG. So I thought that's what I would use. Where's my ATG gun? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put adhesive a little bit on the back as to where I know I'm going to be cutting. Now I'm going to be cutting up here in this circle right here. Up here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it. It doesn't matter if it's lined up or not. I just want to make sure I'm in frame. Okay. And so the ATG adhesive you only want to put it behind where you're going to cut because otherwise, I'll show you what happened, ran into me, is that I'm going to have to remove this ATG adhesive because how am I going to reuse this paper if it's got adhesive on the back? But you can see with the ATG, if you take it and you roll it with your fingers, it will come off if you do it sooner rather than later. So I just want to show that it does come off if you just roll it. 
it will come off. Like I said, I don't have a lot of this removable. This is expensive to me for what you get. I mean, if you're used to paying five or six dollars for this little bit of removable, look how little that roll is compared to this roll, which I pay about $1.88 to $2.18 for that roll. And I get my ATG refills at Tape Jungle. I will have that link below. And sign up for Tape Jungle newsletters because you usually get a discount on your first order. So uh, with the template that comes with this, I'm going to be cutting three circles. And I have my blades in order in which I'm going to use them. Because when I did my first one, I went with my bigger ring and worked my way out. I don't think it should work that way. Or I think it's easier if you work your way in and work your way out. So, of course, on the blade, there's two little uh, legs that stick out with the blade. And so these legs are going to go in this ring right here. Okay? And so each one of these blades are going in that same ring. It's just their different positions. So very, very simple. It probably takes longer to explain it than it does to do it. Now you want to have some firm pressure on your plate and also to on your blade. And so it does help if you have your blades in the order in which you're going to use them so you don't have to think, okay, which one am I using next? And again, you would use this template as your guide as to which one you're using according to the size of the circle you want. Okay, so now let me finish up here. <laughs> I can't talk and do things at the same time. I can talk and use my hands at the same time. Okay, and so then if I'll just pull this back, okay. Oh, I might have to cut that one or cut two of them. So I have that adhesive down there because I didn't want it to shift and it didn't shift on me. Okay, even though I think I'm going to have to cut a couple of those. Again, it's not that difficult. <laughs> Um, but if it doesn't, oh, see, yeah, they, they came apart. I just have adhesive on it because I didn't want it to shift on me. Okay. Okay, so there's the the three inch, three and a fourth, and now my three and a half. And I'm just going to snip it off here because I probably just didn't cut the whole way through. So easy peasy. And then, of course, see, I don't have any adhesive to rub off the back. I can reuse this. I don't have to worry about sticking to something else. So that is the three sizes I got from that one little uh, template right here. And again, I just use those blades in that order. Now, the reason I wanted to show that it was because I do think if you don't use adhesive behind that paper, no matter which system you're using, I think paper shifts. And look how many I did in a matter of just minutes. Easy peasy. Now, I will say that Grace Tolman, she showed this cutting system and she had a great big circle. I think it's called the Jumbo Circle. Now, I'm just going to put a little service announcement out there. If anybody has this Jumbo Circle and you would like to part with it or maybe uh, do a trade or barter system, uh, let me know because I am interested in getting this jumbo circle and I don't know where I would find that unless I would ask a fellow scrapbooker. So someone let me know. You could email me or put in the comment section and we could barter or I would buy that from you. Yes, I absolutely would buy that. <laughs> Not supposed to be. I'm in a spending freeze, but that's how much I like this cutting system. And I will tell you, I have a couple other cutting systems I'm probably am going to give to my sister because I don't like them. This is a great one. Creative Memories had great tools. Okay, so let's get playing some more. And of course, these blades go inside those when you're done with them. Okay, now I will tell you, when it comes to blades and anything sharp, yours truly sometimes I don't have luck with that. So be careful. There are blades on that, but they do store very nicely. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's that. I just wanted to show that. So if you look at this close to my heart inspiration, what do I need? I need a band of paper and a background. Easy peasy. Okay. That's all I'm going to do. And I love using other layouts for inspiration. So of course, here's all the rings I have, and this is going to be my page. So there is my background. It is Cartabella. This came from Travel Stories. It's a navy with a turquoise dot, textured, heavyweight, cardstock, love it. And I'm going to use a nine inch band of white glitter paper. <laughs> yes, 
I'm telling you, when you put things into a kit, you will use it. I have not used white glitter paper forever. And then, of course, in the layout, they just had two strips, and they actually did have red. But I pulled out corrugated paper because doesn't that say school absolutely remember back in the day the teachers would decorate those great big boards on the wall with the corrugated scallop uh, edging yes i helped many a teachers uh, create bulletin boards and displays with that corrugated crepe paper or whatever we used to get that was just so much fun so that's what it's going to look like and so then i am simply going to take these rings in all these different sizes and colors. Now some of those have an adhesive on it. I can feel it. And I'm just going to play with them. And so I'm just going to make a grid as it showed in that layout. And I'm just going to play with my rings. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do. And so then I will, there were two different sizes per each pattern. So what I'll do is just alternate them. Of course, now here was my silver one, and this is where it slipped and slided on me, and so you can tell I have a mistake. So I'm still going to use that. I probably will just cover that mistake up because we're good at that. We can use things that are still mistakes. I think I will do that and that. Maybe I have this backwards. Probably. And so I'm just going to alternate these different rings. That's all I'm simply doing. And I will just do two for each. Yeah, I don't know what I got going on here. I got so many different rings. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to do two rings. So one should be a bigger, one should be a smaller when I'm done there. What am I missing? Oh, I'm missing a silver one. And so then my photo is going to be matted on something. And my photo will probably go, I'm going to do Caddy Wampus. Okay, I'm going to do cattywampus because my grid is going to be pretty much linear. My band is going to be linear, so my photo is going to be cattywampus. I could use some of these insets too, uh, you know, as something decorative on my page. I could do that, okay? And then my plan is to take these doodlebug sequins and sprinkle around the rings. And then easy peasy, I'm going to do a couple. I had some tags here. I don't know if this will be the one I use, but I'm going to put some tags just like that. I think that's what I'm going to do. And my title is going to go on top. It depends. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you what my title is. You got to come back for it. <laughs> yeah. But I think I might make my title Caddy Wampus too. I think so. I think I'm going to follow the arch of the Epcot ball. That's the plan. So again, it's very simple, very colorful, very spacey. Yes. So that is the middle process. And again, when it comes to glitter paper, when I do this corrugated on top of this glitter paper, this ATG really may not work. Sometimes you have to use two different adhesives or use a very strong adhesive to get this anything to stick to glitter paper. This is a kind of a coarse glitter paper. But isn't that simple and very fun using that close to my heart inspiration? Okay, so that is the middle process. I hope you got to see a little bit more of that Creative Memories tool in action. And I'm just going to play with those rings. They're not going to be perfect. They're not going to be straight. They're just going to be in a quick manner just to represent those uh, rings. We'll call them Saturn rings. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so come back and I'll have a finished layout. Yeah, if I don't stop playing here. You know how it is. We get to playing. Yes. Okay. Come back. I will have a finished layout. And uh, yes, talk more about the story <laughs> and this photo. Absolutely. Okay. Hold on. All right. I am back with my finished uh, layout. And I love how it turned out because I don't normally get to play with these colors a lot. And of course, it's school theme. Just love this. And of course, I love the story behind it. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. So if you look at my inspiration piece that was from this close to my heart, and I don't have anybody's name to credit this, but it is on page 61. And you can see my layout is exactly the same. It's just a band with a grid. And so I only used one photo. They had three, but I did use those six circles for my grid, putting it on piece uh, on top of that glitter paper and then using this corrugated paper, which kind of resembles school. I love that. And so I took my photo, which is just one four by six photo, and I took that and I matted it on some yellow paper that was just on my kit, easy peasy. And then of course the showstopper is those grids of those circles using my creative memories tool. And so they are three inches, three and a fourth and three and a half inch circles and rings. 
using this lovely little tool. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. And so I just used six different patterns from the six by six paper pad. And as I was doing some editing, I noticed that it looked better if I kept the patterns together with the rings instead of intermingling them. I think it looked better because I did have six different patterns. And so I put my photo, a little cattywampus. I ran my title, which says this is school. I just uh, followed the shape of the Epcot ball for the word school. And then, of course, I sprinkled some embellishments using the Cartabella sticker sheet, put some on foam tape. I even cut that little astronaut out of one of those 6 by 6 paper pads uh, that was left over. I just cut that. So don't be afraid to use your papers to uh, have some embellishments and, of course, some October afternoon stickers and word stickers. I love using word stickers, and this is what I mean. I use October Afternoon, but this is one of the smallest details you can put on a page that can emphasize your story just with a little word sticker. So, of course, I use Jetpack, High Tech, and Jumpin' Jupiter because I will tell you, I think that's probably what my daughter thought every time when it came to this story and I'll talk about that in just a minute because this is where my journaling is going to go. So the journaling is going to talk about in our homeschooling journey of 14 years the question she got asked over and over and over every single year was how come you're not in school? That was the question. How come you're not in school? Because we traveled a lot, hence the reason why we homeschooled. And so that was a question she got asked all the time because our travels were during the school year and during the school day. And so, of course, there were so many educational things we did. But if people saw you out and about, they thought, why aren't you in school? <laughs> so she she would get so frustrated hearing that question and so of course i thought this photo was perfect because of course this was during the school year this was in february it was during the middle of the day and i know on that trip someone had asked her that question because how come you're not in school? And so I thought this was perfect. There she is in front of the Epcot ball with her hands out and saying, this is school. Yes, life is school. You do not have to be in a classroom to learn. We all know that. And so I love this because I got to use the theme elements of the space we're at Epcot and then also to taking this into the story of school and homeschooling and our journey and that question how come you're not in school? That was asked over and over in those 14 years. And so she had told me that when she went to college, she said, I will be so glad that no one will ever ask her that question again. So that is what this story is about. That is what this layout is about. Using this title, This Is School, with this photo, really just ties it all in. I'm so happy with this. And then also, too, talking a little bit more about her homeschooling journey. And then also, you will notice that I have a hidden Mickey somewhere. And also, I got in these lovely Doodlebug sequins. Now, I will tell you, this is an older product. If you find these, such a great value because this bottle still looks absolutely uh, brand new. Like, it doesn't even look like there's anything used. It's full. But look how many I have to the right here. It's just, I don't even know if I can get them back in. It's like rabbits. They're multiplying. <laughs> so, very fun. And the other thing I wanted to show is that I do have some washi down here. And this is a little tip I wanted to show for washi. Since uh, sometimes you put washi on papers and sometimes your washi won't show up. And so... Oh, the other thing is, is that you'll notice my journaling is going to go up here, and I'm going to put it there. I had thought about this, but I thought it would get lost. I was going to put tags up there, but I left that reserved for my journaling. But sometimes you will use washi, and you'll put it on paper, and this is what happens. Guess what? It disappears into the universe. <laughs> you don't really see it, or you don't even see what's on the washi. So a quick tip is to do two runs of the same washi, and then that first layer will act as a little bit of a buffer, and so then your washi won't, uh, you know, blend into the background. So that is a little washi tip, and so that is what I did at the bottom as a little bit of a footer, as a little ending. I ran two rows of washi for those stars to show up. Now, I will tell you the biggest struggle I had for this layout simply was using this glitter paper because I put paper on top of the glitter. I had sequins on top of the glitter. I had this corrugated paper on top of the glitter. So what I had to resort to 
this would not work. And I knew that going into it. So I will tell you, this saved the day. This super glue gel, really love this. This is what I use for my sequins now. This is what I use for my pearl or beads. Anything that's flat back, rhinestones, gems, I use this. And so that is how I applied all my sequins. And also how I had to apply this uh, thicker to this glitter paper, this thicker title, and then also to all of these rings, I had to give them a dop of this, a little dop of this glue, a little drop of it, because otherwise nothing else works. And so then for my background, of course, I didn't want to use super glue. I did pull out some red line tape, and that did seem to hold. So when it comes to glitter paper, you do have to consider the adhesive Sometimes our old standbys of the ATG and our liquids just is not going to work on glitter paper. So that's just something you have to keep in mind. So that is all I have. I think, uh, I don't know if I said this, but I do have a hidden Mickey on there. See if you can find it. Put it in the comment section if you can find it. It's a little hidden, but it's there. And I want to thank everybody for hopping into this monthly celebrations. Definitely hit the show more button below and look at all the gals in this monthly celebrations YouTube hop to see what we scrapbook and celebrated this month. And we are celebrating school here. We were celebrating our home schooling journey. It was truly a very fascinating, wonderful journey for us for 14 years. I would never, ever uh, not do that again. If I could repeat all of those 14 years, I would do it in a heartbeat. We absolutely had fun together. So that is all I have for today. Come back and next week. We'll play with Kit Crunch. Definitely hit the show more button and check out what everybody else is scrapbooking this month and also to come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do.